The Anti-Defamation League reports that anti-Semitic incidents are up by 388 percent over the same period last year in the U.S. alone, and those numbers around the world are rising. We saw an example just last week in Russia. This video you may have seen before circulating online shows hundreds of people who appear to be storming onto a landing field at an airport chanting anti-Semitic slogans and seeking out passengers arriving on a flight from Tel Aviv. Officials say at least 60 people were arrested. Joining us now to talk about the rise in these incidents is the Israeli government's special envoy for combating anti-Semitism. Michel Kotler Wunsch, uh, you just heard those numbers uh, from the ADL. Uh, your reaction to what you're actually seeing firsthand? So there is a dramatic rise in anti-Semitism, as you said, around the world, hundreds of percentages. And you know, the very same anti-Semitism that enabled, that stoked, that fueled, if you will, the October 7th atrocities, the war crimes, the crimes against humanity, the makings of genocide, raping, burning, pillaging, everything in sight, is the very same anti-Semitism that enables, that stokes, that fuels the responses to the atrocities of October 7th, that deny, that justify, that excuse, and that target Jews around the world. It is devastating. There have been calls from people on both sides for a ceasefire, saying that it would save civilian lives on both sides. What's your reaction to that? I want to be very clear. There was a ceasefire on October 6th, and October 7th, a genocidal terror organization, Hamas, a proxy of a genocidal terror regime in Iran that is committed in its charter, just like Mein Kampf, to the annihilation of the state of Israel and the murder of Jews, broke that ceasefire. 1,400 people were burned, butchered, murdered, raped, abducted. We have hundreds that are held now in the hell of Gaza by that same genocidal terror organization that holds Palestinians hostage as human shields, as sacrifices, preventing them, shooting them when they try to reach humanitarian corridor. And I want to be very, very clear. Whenever Israel seizes Hamas fires, we cannot enable that kind of uh, uh, conduct of a genocidal terror organization to continue to fuel what is happening, including all those that it holds hostage that are Palestinians. There are families who say, uh, who have uh, family members who are being held hostage, who would also like to see a ceasefire to give a better chance potentially of their loved ones being able to survive this and have said that they feel like Israel is not prioritizing their loved ones enough. Not only is Israel prioritizing their loved ones and going in on the ground in order to be able to be able to save some of them, and some of them have been actually released by Israel's forces from Hamas terrorists. But it has to be very clear. Any call for a ceasefire has to be a call, as I said, for the immediate and unconditional release of all those hostages held in standing violation of international law, for the immediate and unconditional putting down of arms by that Hamas genocidal terror organization, for the immediate and unconditional turning in of all the perpetrators of the atrocities of October 7th, the likes of which the, of which the Jewish people have not seen since the Holocaust, and for the immediate cessation for the call to annihilate the state of Israel all over the world that we see in demonstrations on campuses, in city centers, and on social media that calls for, for the, from the river to the sea an annihilation of the state of Israel. Yeah, you know, obviously there are a lot of things that can be true all at the same time, right? There are people who can condemn Hamas, but also say, we have to value lives equally here and understand that, that 1,400 people lost their lives in Israel, but now we have 10,000 people who've lost their lives in Gaza. And so at what point do we say enough? Enough of the, the death that's happening here now anybody in who, Gaza. Anybody who cares for the Palestinians that are held in Gaza and I remind us all that Israel has not been in Gaza since 2005 and that the Hamas took over Gaza in 2006 and continues to violate and to hold Palestinians as human shields and continues to use them as sacrifices. And as I said, that there is a humanitarian corridor that was created by the state of Israel. And I implore that we remember that Israel has done everything possible to call on all Gazan civilians to make their way to the other border that Gaza has, which is with Egypt. You know, tens of thousands of Israelis have been displaced from their homes. And those Gazan civilians have to be allowed 
too, to take not only the humanitarian corridor, but very easily to cross the border into Egypt, where they will have safety. But that's but, not easy to do. I mean, people were told to do that, but then they can't cross the border. Well, it isn't easy because nobody is applying that kind of pressure on Egypt. They're instead applying the pressure on the state of Israel to seize what it must do in order to protect its civilians. Michal, we thank you so much for the conversation. Really appreciate you coming on in your time. Thank you so much for having me. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.